Hi there guys, in this lesson we're going to create the final material which is wax. To do that we'll use a candle as our reference and we'll follow the photos as a guide and a base. Okay great, so let's go. I am using the same brush that I always use and the one that I've used for previous textures and materials. As I've already said, you won't find this brush with the basic Photoshop brushes, so you'll have to create your own, adjust the existing ones or search for your own online. Just find a brush that adapts to your own style. To begin with, I'm going to select yellow orangey tone on the color selector and I'm going to paint the shape of the candle on the reference circle. So fill in the surface completely. Then use the dark tone on the top area of the candle and paint the surface with a lighter colour as this is the area where the flame is. And so the light you see here is much stronger. Now take a darker tone with the colour selector and apply the shadows of the melting wax using the references as a guide. The shadows are opposed to the direct light and so that's why we have this very dark area that's close to the flame. It's important that you understand the laws of light and the importance of the main light source. The top base of the candle comes into direct contact with the main light source, so of course we need to paint this a lot lighter. So let's fill in the area with a lighter tone. Now paint the flame. As you can see it looks very white which is the brightest light. So apply white to paint the flame and now take an orange tone to blend in the edges just like you see in the photos. And see how it works on the fire and the colours. So remove the reference circle we had and we'll carry on working on the wax. We can lighten some of the dark edges and we can add some more hues. We can also shape the wax by softening the edges and just retouching slightly. For the area inside the surface, I'm going to add much lighter tones, as the candle directly illuminates those areas. So remember, you need to consider the light source, as I said before. Now on the edges of the wax that come into contact with the light will lighten we'll mark them with a light line that's almost white. So it just has to be understood that they're lit directly by the flame. The next thing I'm going to do is take the shape of the candle and cut out and retouch the outside shape. So I'll just erase some areas and add others where I think is necessary so I get a good volume. Although we have a sphere as our base, a candle is easily deformed, so we need to bear that in mind and just follow the physics. The candle, of course, shouldn't look perfect. Inside and on the left of the candle, I'll darken a little bit based on the references and understanding that there are areas that don't have the same amount of light, so we need to make those darker.
Now add a white border inside the candle to emphasise the contact with the light. That way we'll also highlight the surface of the candle at the base. I'll go over the outside of the candle gradually to get the desired shape. We need to polish the shape so they fit in well. If I need to, as you can see, I can flip the image to see the painting from a different point of view and check if there are any mistakes. This is always a good trick if you're a bit lost. Observe the references you have and study the areas of light and darkness. Follow these references to paint your candle gradually and you'll be able to understand how the light works. This is important to master when you're painting anything. I'm now going to paint the candle wick in black. So you can tell this apart from the rest of the candle. So we need to make that stand out. Finally, we can soften and retouch the areas of the wax so they blend in well and we get that nice soft finish. Remember to observe the references and try to copy them as much as possible. By copying, we really can learn a lot. And some important concepts just become ingrained and we can find them very useful in later illustrations. And so with that, we have our wax texture finished. We made six different textures and now we need to give them some final touches just to finish them off. So I'll see you in the next and final lesson where we'll do just that.